my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have another video for you all. Today I'd like to discuss how you can set the mood for a scene. My goal in this video is to hopefully give you some tips that you can use to turn any space into a BDSM playroom. This could be a hotel room. This could be your living room. This could be your everyday bedroom because I know that not all of us have the ability to have, say, a dedicated space in the home that's always set up for BDSM practices or to go to public playrooms or dungeons. It is nice to know how you can actually transform a space from its everyday mundane use into something that feels a little bit more intimate and magical and can help put you in the mindset in order to engage in kink. So I'm going to give you guys five different ways that you can think about changing a space to help set the mood. And my first recommendation is lighting. Light is a really important factor in BDSM. Obviously, you need to have enough light to see by, but most of the time we are not doing BDSM in spaces that have the same lighting conditions as, say, our office. If you're thinking about BDSM dungeons that you've seen in movies before or tours that you might have seen online, for the most part, they don't have that, you know, bright overhead lighting. They tend to be a little bit more softly lit, either with like faux candlelight, with red lighting, something that is a little bit easier on the eye, kind of makes everything seem a little bit more dim and dark. Well, that's not the only way of thinking about a potential BDSM space. You could also perhaps have a space where all the lights are turned off, but you're using maybe a single bright headlight or a single overhead light that is a really, really high number of lumens. That might be better for something that is more uh, of say a primal scene or like a takedown scene, a CNC scene, something that has maybe a little bit more of a fear element to it or something where you're maybe playing a little bit with sensory deprivation. So you don't necessarily have to go with kind of the stereotypical dungeon feel, but there are a lot of tools you can do to kind of set up a space to work with more of a dungeon atmosphere as opposed to like its normal everyday use. One thing would be dimmer switches and that's an option because that'll help you really quickly get that dimmer light. Some other options would be actually having color changing LED bulbs. You can get these on Amazon. I think a four pack of them is like less than 20 bucks depending on which brand you get. And this actually taps into another piece of this which is not just the brightness of the light but the hue or the color of the light. Color psychology is a big, big thing for human brains. It's one of the most studied areas of marketing and branding, interior design, and even for movies. And we as humans just have natural associations that we make based on our experiences and culture with certain colors and light definitely has that as well. So we definitely make associations between say red light and something that's more intimate, more passionate, maybe a little bit more risque versus blue light, which can be seen as calming, green light, which might be a little bit, it's common in nature, but it's not usual as an actual light source to have green light. So you can think about things like, you know, how does a green overhead neon sign impact your perception of something versus red hued bulbs or from fake candlelight or from daylight that's filtering through a sheer colored curtain. And all of this can definitely depend on your own personal preference and experience, but it is worth experimenting with. And if you tend to use, say, you know, all blue LED lights, when you are doing a BDSM scene versus the normal everyday lights, you're creating associations between those colors and the types of play that you're doing. So you kind of get more into a groove of recognizing this is like, this is our BDSM space versus this is, you know, a, an everyday space in other situations. I've already kind of touched on some, but there are lots of ways that you can manipulate the lighting situation in the room. You can get lamps, you can change the bulbs in overhead lights. So you can use that with the LED color changing bulbs that I've mentioned. Around Halloween and Christmas, you can find actually like tinted light bulbs that are only one color. Those tend to be a little bit cheaper, especially if you can get them after the holidays on sale. You can put colored LED strips behind furniture to create a little bit of ambiance in the background. You can get flameless fr flickering candles. You can also use like sheer curtains that have a tint to them if you want to change the color, but not necessarily have to change 
all of the bulbs. You can use floodlights, ring lights, basically anything that is a light source. There's usually some way that you can manipulate it or, or change the dimness of it or change how bright it is. Something else to keep in mind is I specifically mentioned flameless flickering candles. Candles are really popular for two reasons. One is the natural ambiance and the lighting and also for the smell as well. I personally don't recommend them because usually when you have candles around, you want to keep an eye on them. And with BDSM activities, you are probably going to be focusing more on your partner or at least you should be. So there's a risk that you might accidentally knock it over. It's really easy to accidentally catch things when you're swinging a flogger or a whip, especially in a confined area. And either you're going to be not paying enough attention to the candle and risking burning your house down, or you're not going to be paying enough attention to your partner, which is going to make you so you don't have a good scene. And with Amazon and with other websites, it's so easy to get very realistic looking flickering candles that don't have the same issues that are associated with the standard candles. And I would really recommend you look into those instead if you are looking for that sort of candle like look when you are creating a scene space. This actually segues really nicely into my second recommendation, which is scent. Scent is such a powerful tool. It is one of our strongest senses when it comes to a direct connection to memory. So it is something you can really use to help create a scene space when you are you know, using it regularly on an ongoing basis. But it is something at the same time you need to be a little bit careful with. Two reasons for that. One, because scent has such a strong link to memory, there is a chance if you or someone that you're playing with has experienced trauma that they link to a scent, you need to be careful of not accidentally activating that. On the other side, fragrances are one of the most common irritants or allergies. So you need to be careful kind of, I would not personally like surprise a partner with a smell because it could turn out that they hate the smell or it reminds them of an aunt that used to smother them when they were a kid or it just is something that they don't otherwise enjoy. So if you are thinking about bringing scent into a scene, make sure you are having conversations about that as you would with any of these elements I discussed in this video. But if you are using scent, there are so many things that you can use here. If you're looking for pleasant scents, some of the things that you might wanna think about using would be maybe burning sage in the room before the scene. Scents like frankincense and myrrh can be great as well for sort of more of a religious undertone. Citrus can be very uplifting and energizing if you wanna have a scene that's based around that or just your own personal favorite fragrances. You can use smells to either scent the whole room or you can keep them just to your person and have it kind of waft as you're getting close to their skin or as you, you know, put a hand over their mouth or things like that. So you could use things like body lotion, shower gel, perfumes, reed diffusers, water diffusers. You could use car air fresheners. You could use room sprays. You could use wall plugins. There's a lot of options when it comes to how to create scents in a room. I personally would not recommend anything that involves having an open flame. Again, like candles or incense for reasons that I've already talked about, but there are lots of substitutes like say candle wax melters that can help you still kind of utilize those same things without having to deal with the worries of having an open flame in the space. You also don't have to use just pleasant scents in a scene. I really think that scent is probably one of the two things in this video I'm gonna talk about that are really underutilized when it comes to creating a stressful or fearful environment if you want to in a scene, or especially for taming brats, having a freshly cut durian put in front of your submissive nose, or dirty laundry, gym socks, you know, the scent of boiled chicken for me is one of my least favorite things on this planet just something that kind of has a little bit of a negative or unpleasant connotation can be good for things like rat taming for discipline as a deterrent as a punishment element there are lots of ways that you can use negative scents in a scene especially if you are kind of playing with a little bit of those more darker elements about something that you and your partner enjoy and that brings me to my third recommendation 
which is sound. Sound is probably one of the first things that you associate with going to a BDSM dungeon. Having DJs or having a set list is a very big part of having a public dungeon atmosphere, having something going on in the background behind all of the screams and the other noises. And it is a really big part of creating a scene atmosphere. I personally really like the Kink Fest DJ playlist. And if they are still available, I will link to the SoundCloud where they are available below if you wanna check them out. And I also have a playlist that I recommend for Rope, which I have on my channel, which you can also find down in the description box. But what kind of music should you be looking for or sounds should you be looking for if you're trying to create a BDSM atmosphere? For me, I like to think about something that is a medium to slow tempo, something that kind of has a little bit of a darker undertone to it, and something that kind of has a little bit of a sensual atmosphere. But really, this is a lot about personal taste because everybody has their own individual interest in music. Some people like to play classical music, other people like EDM, other people like metal, other people like belly dancing music, and other people just like to play in silence because that is an option as well. So it might take a little bit of experimenting to find something that really clicks with you, but there are also a lot of playlists out there that you can try from. Another thing to consider would be something that's a sound but not necessarily music especially if your partner or whoever's in the scene is wearing a blindfold, for example, there are other senses that they're in there for long enough will start to heighten and they will start kind of picturing other things because they can't necessarily visualize what the room looks like. So you can use that along with say white noise or the sound of a thunderstorm, an ocean or rainforest to actually help create and transport people to an environment that you can't necessarily replicate in your everyday space that you're dealing with. So sound can be a really great way of creating a sense that you're somewhere where you're actually not able to go to. You should also think about the overall tempo and the kind of noise level that you're dealing with here. Depending on the scene energy, you may want something that is very loud and very fast, especially if you're doing like a long, heavy impact play scene, or maybe you want something that's a little bit more slower, a little bit more methodical. This is especially what I like for rope bondage, but you should also keep in mind that if it's too loud, you're not going to be able to hear your partner if they say for to try to communicate something during the scene. And if it's too soft, it may kind of get lost in the background eventually. And if the music portion of it is important to you, you kind of want to be able to find that sweet spot. And another thing to consider is you don't necessarily have to go with pleasant sounds either. I've already touched on this a little bit in the previous section, but there are definitely a lot of ways that you can use sound to create an uneasy atmosphere or to create a mood that doesn't necessarily tap into pleasant emotions. So this could be things like playing atonal music, the sound of a first grade class playing, you know, a dozen recorders out of tune and offbeat from each other. This could be like the Teletubbies on loop for two hours, a horror movie soundtrack if you want a, a spooky and fear-based vibe. There are lots of ways that you can play with sound that don't necessarily involve having a, like a super like happy, relaxing atmosphere to them. You can also use it to engage in some darker head spaces as well. And if you as the dominant or the top don't wanna have to listen to a bunch of first graders playing a recorder off tune, you can also use devices like over your headphones or in your headphones that are noise canceling for, you know, out basically not allowing any sound to leak if you don't want to have to participate in that. And that can also add a level of like power exchange or power differential to the scene as well. And that brings me to my fourth suggestion, which is temperature. Temperature is a personal one for me for sure, because I am somebody who is very cold sensitive. This is not necessarily something where it's about transforming a space, but it is something to keep in mind when you're trying to create an overall environment for a scene. What is a comfortable everyday temperature for you when you're walking around the house in full clothing is likely to not be the same when you're completely naked for several hours. And for the most part, when you're doing BDSM, you're probably going to be wearing some degree of less clothing than what you are usually wearing. On the flip side, if you're doing something like wearing full body latex or an entire outfit made out of real leather or saran wrap bondage, making sure that things don't get too hot, sweaty, itchy, uncomfortable can also be important. So it might actually need to be a little bit lower, but there are lots of tools that you can use to help basically create a comfortable environment for the scene. Obviously there are wall heaters, 
If you don't have that, or if you're playing in a space where maybe you're not as able to regulate the temperature that way, you can use things like space heaters. You can bring in things that help create an ambiance, like a faux fireplace. You can do things like have ice packs on hand if you're worried about people getting overheated, uh, having cold water bottles, or like heating pad, an electric blanket. There are just so many little tools that you can use that kind of help regulate the temperature. You can also consider doing things that help you regulate body temperature before the scene. The two big examples here are if you are trying to engage in a BDSM mindset, there are different ways that you can use temperature to help you get there. One example would be after you've gotten home from work, you're ready for a scene that evening, and then your dominant partner shoves you into a cold shower and starts barking orders at you, that's probably, for some people at least, going to help you get into a submissive mindset because it's such a quick, jarring experience, and the cold is part of what makes that is such a big switch from your everyday normal environment. On the flip side, you might also want to engage in, say, a long, warm, luxurious bath before you engage in an impact play scene because that helps warm up the surface of the skin and might make it a little bit easier for your muscles to relax or for you to just get in kind of a, a more relaxed, more fluid mindset. And that brings me to my fifth suggestion, which is furniture. Furniture is definitely one of the hardest things to change about a space particularly if you're in, say, a rental unit that came fully furnished or in a hotel room, but that doesn't mean you don't have any control over it at all. Particularly with larger furniture, like, say, tables and couches, there are lots of things you can do to cover and modify the space. And you can use different textures, actually, to change how comfortable the space is or to help change it kind of from how you normally perceive it every day. So, for example, you might cover everything up with soft quilts, you might use tatami mats on the floor, you might put down plastic sheeting, you might use a large sheepskin rug. All of these can bring in sort of different elements, different feelings to them, and again, help create that separation from everyday mundane use. You also don't necessarily have to be nice about this either. If you normally have, say, a carpeted surface, you can put standard plastic sheeting over it and have kind of that weird crinkly texture. You can also use these like plastic, like office space covers that are used to protect carpet from wheels of chairs. The underside of those normally have some spikes on them to help grip into the carpet. They're not anything that's going to draw blood unless you like really, really try, but they can create kind of uh, an uneven texture and slightly unpleasant experience if you want somebody to say kneel on them for the course of the scene. But there are also ways you can think about like almost adding extra temporary separation in your space. So for example, if you're playing at home in your living room and you can see the kitchen, that might distract you from enjoying the scene because then you start worrying about packing the kids' lunches and what you're gonna make for dinner. And the more you can kind of wall yourself off from those activities, the more you might be able to focus in on the scene that you're doing. My favorite way to do this is actually with curtains on a movable, like on rails coat rack. Those, cause those are really easy to assemble and they're pretty cheap. And they basically create like temporary separation between say you and the TV screen or looking at like the kid's playroom or looking at basically anything that would cause distraction. It can help change the layout of the space. It can separate you from the furniture in the room that you're not using. And it's just another tool that you might want to consider. You can also use these to hang up tapestries. You can use this to create almost like a medical type environment, you know, with like the sheeting that they use around like individual beds in a ward. So there's also little different elements you can use there to help create the sort of vibe that you like for the scene that you're doing. Anyways, those are all of my suggestions for how to create mood for a scene. Hopefully you found these interesting and helpful. These are just a few ways that you can start. And also remember, one, to talk about these things with your partner before you just surprise them, particularly when it comes to things that are closely linked with memory. Don't forget about using color to your advantage when you're creating mood and mindset. And also one thing to consider as a lot of these things are as important in their absence as they are in their presence. So you can use that to your advantage as well with purposeful silence, for example, or with making an all white empty blank room. So just keep that in mind as well.
any comments or questions please feel free to put that down in the comment section below i love hearing from you all if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from me please consider subscribing i make videos twice a week and if you really enjoyed this video and you'd like to help support my channel you can do that over on patreon which links down below which helps you get exclusive content extra videos photo shoots so on and so forth and if you do already support me over there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until i see you guys next time i hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week Bye bye